Now, digital services are an important growth driver for the pharmaceutical industry. To harness this opportunity outside your core businesses, pharmaceutical companies need to adapt both internally and by leveraging an ecosystem of pharmatech startups. But this ecosystem is highly fragmented and very dynamic, therefore difficult to navigate. Working with startups is also a challenge as their culture and ways of working can be different. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, as we focus on startups and leveraging on the pharmatech sector. The Federal Bank of Nigeria says it has redesigned all major Naira notes and will be, or by December 2022, start circulating them. The affected denominations are 100 Naira, 200 Naira, 500 Naira, and 1,000 Naira. Now, the CBN governor, Godwin Emifili, announced this at the press briefing on Wednesday. He said the notes were redesigned following a request from the federal government. The last time the bank redesigned the Naira was in 2014 when it changed the design of the 100 Naira notes to commemorate Nigeria's centenary. Now, Chief Economist and CEO of Streetnomics Limited Gospel Obele gives an analysis on this development. Take a look. Yeah, thank you so much for um, the question. So it's a developing story and um, it's one it's one that um, comes with mixed reactions, quite honestly. And that's because um, there are short term implications because uh, and that's to say that um, everywhere else globally, you know, if you put it into context, um, before you can fizzle out current existing notes, it may take up to a year, you know, of, of engaging that monetary activity and then slowly begin to introduce the new notes and all that. Take, for instance, in the UK, um, um, the, the process has started to begin to exit on the current um, pound notes that has the queen picture on them and all that. And then it's expected that by 2024, you know, new notes would have been in circulation with King Charles and all. So understand on the normal basis of things, it would t usually take way much more than 45 days, you know, um, like what the central bank has, has, has positioned on um, to do this. But however, um, the central bank is looking at bigger tickets on the table, such as trying to manage um uh, the central bank is trying to manage um um the electioneering economics of things you know and um, and that's very critical right now that um you know things are getting heated up you know crises are also evolving in different parts of the country and it's looking really fiercely contested as it were so the idea of votes buying and all that the central bank want to be in position to sort of influence or hijack how that happens you know being the fact also that on the 31st of January, um, the current, from the 31st of January, 2023, the current notes would become illegal tenders. So technically it would mean that you cannot buy votes with the old notes because people would no longer collect it as it would become useless to them. But however, on the short term, let's not forget that um, the flood and climate conversation is on the table. Um, Christmas is around the corner. And um, the, the the challenge with managing news like this for Nigerians would be that people are also trying to exit and take out the old news, which may work for um, this whole challenge of dealing with increasing inflation, but there will still be inflation of some sort. And that's because scarcity conversation will come into for, you know, how much of the new notes will be will be produced enough in good time, you know, to balance out on the supply demand um, bit of of how this is going to turn out and let's not forget because the central bank is in control of the supply side of this whole arrangement so that would mean that the apex bank may intentionally you know pace uh, the introduction of these new notes into the economy and that intentionality right there may now be the, the new conversation of a cost impact inflation if not well managed so it's it's a conversation that that sort of sits on the fence uh, because it it comes along with mixed um, impact if well managed or if not well managed as the case may be however we're still looking forward to um, um, positive times ahead um, and hoping that this will bring the Nigerian uh, financial sector monetary uh, block into a much more better place. But also to state, and it's very important to state that the, the, the redesigning of the currency has nothing to do with the value of the currency. The value of the currency is dependent on the productive block of the economy, not on the redesigning of 
a currency's face value so uh, they are very two different things you know and one does not positively impact the other in the, in the direct sense of things maybe indirectly but not directly especially when you do not have the productive um, um, engagement all right that was gospel obelli uh, an economist uh, giving his own analysis on the new naira notes has been introduced by the central bank of nigeria well, moving on, Adeola Ali is the CEO and founder of an online pharmacy and healthcare platform providing access to medicines and healthcare solutions for individuals and healthcare providers. As a licensed pharmacist in the United Kingdom and United States of America, Adeola launched One Health NG in Nigeria when she realized it was difficult to purchase specialized medications in the country for her child. She joins us now to discuss business development prospect for startups in PharmaTech. Many thanks for joining us at your Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. It is indeed our pleasure. Let us just start from the basics, as it were. You know, why your interest uh, in PharmaTech? I know I said uh, you had issues uh, getting the right drugs for your child. Can you just uh, bring us up to speed, really? For sure. So, I mean, I'm a practicing pharmacist. So, the idea of understanding drugs, drugs usage, access to medication, and being in that field already, I was aware of, and I'm aware of the solutions that are possible. But from a personal standpoint, like how I decided that, yes. okay, I wanted to go head on into the startup was my really not getting my son's inhalers. So I had to ration, I had to, you know, beg people sometimes, I had to wow. source out of the country. Wow. And it, it's, it's a problem. Upon even digging deeper, I found out that this is not atypical. A lot of people are suffering from not being able to manage their conditions very well because they don't have access, consistent mm. access to medications. Okay. So that's how we started. Okay, well, interesting story. But let's look at um, the industry itself, uh, PharmaTech, okay. because uh, what we have mostly, if you just go around Lagos, you see uh, some like small shops, chemist shops and all of that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, selling or dispensing drugs. Some of them are not exactly licensed. They're not even uh, registered pharmacists as it were. But if you were to have advised them, someone who is interested in uh, starting up a business in pharma tech, would you really say it's something rigorous or something like an all commerce affair? So I would say pharma tech, really the tech piece of pharma mm. is just automating a lot of processes that exist online. online. So okay. there's pharma tech, okay, when you say pharma tech, there's pharma tech, there is drug development pharma tech. So okay. meaning about like new molecules to mm. help with us. Okay. There's wholesale pharma tech. So mm. being able to get sourcing for manufacturers, easier procurements, easier ordering online. Yeah. There's my retail tech that like you're talking about, being yes. able to dispense to the last mile. Mm. And that is a typical like user journey for an individual. You go to regular pharmacy. If you want to start a business, I mean, traditionally, you want to know what they already exists, which is mm. a regular pharmacy, right? True. Online is just another way. It's a, it's a fastest way. A modified, faster way. Faster way as well as a more innovative. That's the future of mm. be, not having to physically go somewhere mm. to get your medication. So, yes, exploring <laughs> digitalization in, mm. in healthcare, in pharma, would be, the, would be a very positive way mm. to go. Okay, for, for instance, now, well, I know we are not really there when it comes to our technology, internet usage, and all of that in Africa, specifically Nigeria. Would you really say that uh, the pharma tech industry is uh, a bit novel? It's something that um, Nigerians are still trying to grapple with. Well, yes, it's kind of new, and people are the genuine, the regular habits right now of mm. regular people is to go to your local pharmacy. Mm. However, post pandemic yes. people are very comfortable accessing care online mm -hmm. we have over i think it's about 20 percent growing year on year now online shoppers They're about 78 million online shoppers oh, wow. and 25 percent of those are shopping for healthcare. so telemedicine mm -hmm. online pharmacy you'd be surprised oh, wow. i mean we have i mean my my pharmacy one health we dispense to over seven thousand enrollees i dispense every day I'm delivering last mile. So invariably, it is a very big business. Yes. Okay, so for instance, <laughs> I still need to And it's to growing, know, it's still it growing. It is still growing by the yeah. day. So uh, we talk about startups a whole lot on this particular show. So if I, uh, uh, okay, fine, I may not be a pharmacist, but uh, I know about the potentials in mm -hmm. pharma tech. I really want to get there. What does it really take? I mean, to say you want to be in pharma tech, you have to really understand why you're teching the pharma in <laughs> the first well. place, yes. right? So are you, do, you, do you have software developers? Do you understand products? 
Do you understand the solutions? Are there easy things that you could use that exist, like your Google Sheets or whatnot, to, to delight your customers, to provide those services? You have to be service-based. You have to yeah. have the value and the impact yeah. that you're trying to push before the technology. So technology just enables you to deliver yeah. the services. So yes, technology in, in our daily lives has to be at the forefront, at the backbone of yeah. how we operate. Yeah. So if we are going to start your pharmacy, yeah. it doesn't have to be online, but yeah. do you have your electronic systems yeah. that keeps your record? Yes. Do you have digitization? When you're consulting your patients, are you documenting it? Okay, but do you have to physically have the drugs? Well, that's a business model question mm. versus solu like versus impact or solution question. All right. So for us, I have some, <laughs> and I don't have some. Okay. Like so, I, I I mean we have a physical pharmacy in, in Lagos, for example. Mm -hmm. But out of Lagos, I have over, over almost seven hundred pharmacies. I don't hold the stock for them. Okay, so you I could actually just get from local sources. Yeah, and deliver so because to we're empowering plant. the community, mm. right? There's no point in trying to mm. have multiple chains. I mean, for us, it's not as scalable. Mm as building an infrastructure to support the system. Okay. So you don't necessarily, but mm. what you have to bear in mind is the end user, are they getting quality medication? Are okay. you really ensuring that you have processes that make sure that even if you're not delivering it yourself, mm. the pharmacy that you have on board mm. is giving them quality access to medications and delivering it on time. Very, 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 very interesting. Uh, but uh, so you uh, have the passion. I'm talking about, um, uh, for instance, someone who wants to really get into this. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a passion and then there's the technology and uh, listening to you now, uh, he or she uh, has a bit of an idea or, uh, of how to go about it. But is there specific that you'd need to learn to be able to stand out? You mean in techno pharma technology? In pharmatech, yes. I mean, you have to have a product mindset in terms of what is that automation mm. that in allows you to skill yes. or delight your, your patients and your mm -hmm. customer. Yes. I think that's the forefront. So by the time you start to think around that, you start to innovate. Okay. So if you want to be in tech, in pharmatech, that's how you have to think. Mm. I mean, what are the solutions exist? Do you want to be, do you want to have an app? Do you want to have a website? Are you just going to automate through WhatsApp? But to be honest, in healthcare, really, mm. at the heart of it, it has to be the care, the end result. The care, what is the goal mm. of you dispensing that drug for patient mm. treatment, for adherence, for access? Okay. What are the partners that you're going to leverage to make this work? And okay. how are you going to use technology mm to solve that problem. Okay, I mentioned some challenges that we have in Nigeria as regards uh, technology, uh, internet access, and uh, you know, how it is. Uh, but uh, are there other ones um, that uh, pharmatech um, startups uh, may face? Challenges that is. I mean, there's a funding aspect. So because mm -hmm. you're trying to build a solution, typically it requires, and most of, most of us startupers we have to have seed money, pre-seed money. So, yeah, <laughs> seed money, big seeds here, yeah? or just little. I mean, little, little incremental because okay. you you have to get and prove you yeah. know that you you can you can return investments. Oh. You have to prove that you've deployed okay. and you're executing, and then you get more. And like as you as you think big, as you see the problem, as you size it, you ask for more until you get your your margins right mm. and your pro EBITDA pro positive. And then that way you're able to be sustainable. But yeah. it really depends, right? Um, some business model is really about, you know, growing up, growing your GMV, your revenues versus your margins, and True. then you exiting. So it, it really depends. That's a business model question, I'll say. Yeah. But yes, I mean, really, truly just innovating around that is really, is really important. And also... Another, I would say, another issue that one will have to think around is regulations. So, regulation. Tell us about it. So with regulation in pharmacy and healthcare, it's highly regulated. Oh. I mean, you should know what you're doing. Oh. So it's a business where I would really recommend either you have a co-founder or a founder that is in healthcare or in pharmacare. Oh. Because I, I can always say at the backbone of we healthcare professionals is care, is that oh. end result. Oh. So you want to understand why you're doing what you're doing and how you're impacting um, the people that you're serving. Mm. So with regulations, thank God, they're safeguarding that. So do you have your pharmacy license? Okay. Are you registered? The online registration as well has just come out where mm. you have to have some certain parameters and records and you can only dispense over-the-counter items or you need a prescription for, okay. for prescribed drugs. So mm. all of those regulations, you have to ensure that you're sticking to them mm. um, and not getting counterfeit drugs, for example, mm. from, I don't know, from the markets, yeah. <laughs> things like that. So yeah. Okay, fine. So uh, we don't really have so much time, but let's talk about um, the future of pharmatech. I know um, 
online activities and never and all of that uh, got to like a crescendo uh, in the wake of um, the COVID uh, pandemic and all of that. Uh, so, uh, would you really say that um, the future is bright for pharmatex, uh, specifically in Nigeria? Oh, absolutely. I'll say the future is bright in general. In Nigeria, obviously, there's still some challenges that we yeah. have to, in terms of, there's a market creation that needs to happen. Okay. So, and that comes with some market awareness, especially mm. for the end user. So you still have some education around, you know, I can counsel you online, you'll be fine. Okay. You, you know, there's time, there's money and time that can, that'll be wasted if you physically have to go into somewhere only mm. for you to realize that you can get that online. Yes. Um, so we have to obviously educate the audience about, you know, online being a genuine alternative. Mm. And, and also really for us, for it to really be scalable, we have to have interoperability, meaning we have to be able to work with the doctors, work with the labs, to work together, have digital infrastructure that I'm able to you, you dispense and you prescribe a drug, mm. you send it to me. I have that connection. I, we both have the records. I know what they're supposed to take. I, when something's off, I can say that this is your lab, laboratory scientist. They give me their records. I follow it up. I forward it back. Sure. That three-way connectivity, that interoperability is very essential for us to skill in the healthcare mm. profession. So I'll say that those two things really mm. is super important. Very, very interesting conversation. But uh, we have to go. I guess we may have to bring you again because there's a whole lot of interesting things yeah, to talk about absolutely. pharma and, and uh, startups and generally. But we do appreciate your time you Thank know, you on the so show much. for today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it is indeed it. our pleasure. As we round off now, the federal government has been called upon to give entrepreneurial support to women in mining sector in order to enhance their livelihood. Now, this was the submission of the president of women in mining in Nigeria, Engineer Janet, at the AME during the press conference here in Lagos. We'll leave you with details of that report. I am Justin Akadonia. See you again next time. This press conference is to bring the plight of women in mining in Nigeria to the fore. It is also to herald the maiden edition of the Gold and Gemstones Conference to be organized by the Women in Mining, Nigeria, Lagos chapter. Led by engineer Janet Adeyemi, the group is not happy with the hardship women in mining go through while trying to make all ends meet. Adeyemi said they are saddled with the responsibility of empowering women to be financially relevant in their respective areas of specialization. It is imperative that all critical stakeholders in the mining sector should make efforts in ensuring that women are carried along in all the solid mineral value chains, considering the strategic role they play in the development of the mining sector in Nigeria. She further enjoyed the government, critical stakeholders, and the general public to join hands with women in mining as we push for greater mainstreaming in the sector. According to her, the event would address the strategic role women play in the development of the solid mineral sector in Nigeria and will also examine the investment environment of mining as it affects them. Because it's a strategic location with vast economic and financial potentials, which if well harnessed, could result in the transformation of Lagos to a major jewelry hub, where mineral trading and jewelry can grow and make significant economic impact. This is part of the efforts geared towards mainstreaming gender into this mining sector in Nigeria. The group stressed the need for all hands to be on deck at ensuring that women are carried along in all the solid mineral value chains. They called on government and other stakeholders to partner with them to push for gender mainstreaming in the sector.